provision, oh God. We pray, oh God, Jesus, for financial breakthroughs, oh God. We pray right now, oh God, Jesus, for freedom, oh God. Lord, we pray for those, oh God, Jesus, that need to know you, oh God. Lord, we pray right now, Lord, that you will have your way, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray for the backsliders, oh God. Draw them back to you, oh God. Bring them home, oh God, Jesus. Help them to know, oh God, Jesus, that you have called them, oh God, for such a time as this, oh God. Lord, we pray right now, Jesus, that they will know their identity, oh God, Jesus, that they will know that they belong to you, oh God. Lord, we pray right now, oh God, that no shame, oh God, Jesus, will keep them away from you, oh God. Help them to come while there's still time, oh God. Lord, we pray right now, oh God, that they will realize, oh God, that nothing in this world would ever satisfy their souls, that nothing in this world will ever give them the things that you can give them, oh God. Lord, we pray, oh God, that they will seek after you with all that they have. Lord, they will seek after you, oh God. Lord, we know that you are a rudder of those who diligently seek you, oh God. Lord, so we pray right now, oh God, that they, oh God, Jesus, will come to you, oh God. Lord, we pray, Jesus, that you will have your way, oh God. Lord, we pray right now, oh God, for the vision, oh God, Jesus, of planting churches, oh God. Lord, we pray right now, oh God, that churches be planted in this city, oh God. Lord, that we may take the word, oh God, Jesus, to those that don't know you, oh God. That we may take the word, oh God, Jesus, to the cities, oh God, Jesus, that are lost, oh God. To the cities, oh God, that are in darkness, oh God. May, the, may your light, oh God, shine in those cities, oh God. May your light, oh God, Jesus, illuminate everything, oh God, Jesus, that needs to be plucked up and rooted out, oh God, in those cities, oh God. Lord, I pray right now, oh God, that you will continue, oh God, to do what only you can do, Lord Jesus. Lord, I pray right now, Lord God, that you, oh God, Jesus, will make ways, oh God, make ways in the wilderness, oh God, make ways in the darkness, oh God. Lord, bring us out, oh God. Lord, I pray right now, oh God, for the body of Christ, Lord, that we will unify, oh God, Jesus. Lord God, Jesus, that we will come together, oh God. Lord, that we will come together to do your will, Lord Jesus, that we, oh God, Jesus, will stand strong, oh God, Jesus. Lord, we need each other, oh God. Help us to not forget, oh God. Help us to know, oh God, Jesus, that, that, that we are better together than apart, oh God. Help us to know, oh God, Jesus, Lord, that we need, oh God, Jesus, to stand on one another, oh God. Lord God, Jesus, may each and every one of our gifts, oh God, edify the body, oh God, Jesus. Lord, help us not, oh God, Jesus, to do things in selfish vain, oh God. Lord God, but to do it for your will and for your glory, oh God. Lord, I pray, Jesus, that you would continue, oh God, to look down upon us, oh God. Continue, Jesus, to shine your grace upon us, oh God. Lord, have your way, oh God. Have your way, Jesus, in your name, oh God. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up your name in this place tonight, oh God. You're worthy to be praised. Lord, we bless the name of Jesus, oh God. We lift you up, God. You are mighty. Lord, you are holy, oh God. You are worthy, oh God, of our worship, Lord God, and you are worthy of our praise. God, we are grateful for you tonight, God. We thank you that we know your name. God, we thank you that we have on the name of Jesus. Oh God, we are grateful, oh God, for your mercy. Mercy, so oh God, that you have shown us you are the merciful Savior. We praise you for the breath, oh God, that you have on our lungs. God, the angels, oh God, they bow before you, oh God. But the redeemed, Lord God, come to cry hallelujah. To thank you, Jesus, that we are on our way. Oh God, that you are preparing a place, Lord, for your people. You are that great preparer, oh God. You are the restorer of the breach, oh God. You are the one, Lord God, that is able to look, Lord God, upon those that are being held captive. Oh God, 
God, even as we speak, we praise you, Lord, because you are still filling, oh God, with the Holy Ghost. We praise you, God, Father, because you are restoring, God, those, oh Lord God, that are wayward, those, oh God, that have backslidden. God, you have a plan, Jesus. Oh God, you're charting a path, oh God, for your people, oh Lord, Father, to go back up to Zion, oh God, Father, and build the altars again. You're the one, Lord, that are visiting us, Lord God, in our prayer rooms. Oh, God, we thank you tonight. Oh, God, that you're making a way. Lord, you are the way maker. Oh, God, you are still the healer. God, you are still the great physician. You're the lover of our souls. Oh, God, we come to bless your name tonight. Oh, God, because we know, God, you can remind us. Oh, God, that you are our first love. Oh, God, we're searching we're searching tonight. We're searching for you, Lord. We are trying to find you, Jesus. Oh, God, Father, in the hot pursuit. Oh, God, of the lover of our souls, Jesus. Oh, God, we're looking, oh, God, Father, through the busy, oh, Lord. Father, we're looking, oh, God, Father, through the shorting of time, trying to find our Savior, Jesus. Oh, God, we come to touch you. Oh, God, like the woman with the issue of blood. Oh, Lord, we will touch you tonight. Oh, God, we're after your goodness. Oh God, we're out of your kindness. Oh God, our souls are in need of your goodness. Our souls, oh God, are in need of your kindness. Oh God, I pray that you would search, Lord God, our hearts tonight. Oh God, find the blockage, oh Jesus. Oh God, that is stopping the free flow of the Holy Ghost. I pray, Lord God, that you would unblock it tonight. Oh Jesus, hear the cry, oh Lord, that is coming from our hearts. Lord, would you want stop Lord God Father the thing that is blocking your people oh God I pray that we'll be encouraged to press on Lord you are still strong God you are still mighty hallelujah God your blood still runs red hallelujah oh God and you're able oh God to cause us to be stronger today oh God than we were yesterday Jesus oh God we come to search for the first day oh God you feel this with the Holy Ghost. Lord, we still want Holy Ghost power. God, we still want Holy Ghost fire. I pray that you would rain it down from heaven. I pray, oh God, that we prepare, Lord God, the right sacrifice. Oh God, that you would consume. Lord, we come to turn tonight. Oh God, from our wicked ways. Lord, show us our wicked ways. Oh God, search it out, Lord. Oh God, drive it out, God. Oh God, move the unclean. Oh God, Father, purge us from the uncleanness. Oh God, Father, I pray. Oh God, that you would put it out, Lord God of the body. I pray, oh God, that you would find the exit door. Oh God, that it would set the enemy, oh God, out of the camp. I pray, oh God, that you would destroy it. I pray, God, that you would remove us. Oh God, every unclean spirit. Oh God, Father, that would hold us back. Oh God, from feeling the presence of the Lord. Oh God, we cry tonight. Oh God, that you would give us our Savior. Oh God, that we will search him out tonight. Oh God, that we will find you tonight. Oh Jesus. Oh God, the church has need of you. Oh Lord, to be filled with you. Oh God, in this hour, Jesus. Oh God, for Holy Ghost power demonstration. Oh God, I pray. Oh God, that you would help us tonight. God, we're not tired yet. Oh God, we're not satisfied. We're not satisfied. Oh God, until every soul, oh God, receive a touch of fire. Oh God, until it's like fire. God, shut up in our bones one more time. Oh God, until we burn like God, Father, with what breaks your heart. I pray in the name of Jesus. Oh God, that when we come into the house doors, oh God, that it would not be business as usual. God, we're tired of the norm. Oh God, we would see a move of God. Lord, we would see the drug addicts walk out, Lord. Oh, God, of their addiction, Jesus. We would see, oh, God, the bands of wickedness broken. Oh, God, and the oppressed go free. Lord, remember the oppressed, the devosa. Remember them tonight, Lord. Oh, God, we lift them up before your name. God, release your power. Oh, God, release your glory. Lord, you have your glory. Lord, your glory, let it be revealed. Lord, let your glory be uncovered. Oh, God, we cry tonight. We're not tired yet, Lord. Father, until 
minister. Oh, God, in the congregation. Oh, God, this is the fast, Lord, God, that you have chosen. Oh, God, to break it, Lord. Oh, God, to break it, Jesus. Oh, God, to remove, Lord. Oh, God, the sin from the camp. Oh, God, Father, you have done this evil. Oh, God, in thy sight. Oh, God, we want every brother and sister, oh, God, to be restored. Oh, Lord, Father, we thank you. God, because you're going to do it. And we praise you tonight. And we worship you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we stand all across the room tonight? Can we give God some praise in the building? Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord God. We lift you up, Lord God, tonight, Lord. There is truly no one like you, Lord God. Lord God, you sit high and you look low, Lord God. Heaven is your throne, Lord Jesus, and the earth is your footstool, Lord God. Lord, we're thankful, Lord God, to be in your house tonight, Lord God. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we want to lift you up, oh God, and exalt your name, oh God, and exalt you, Lord Jesus. Come on, can we lift up God in this place right now? Can we lift up a praise before our great God? Lord God, we thank you tonight, God. We bless your name, Jesus. There is nobody like you, Lord God. Lord, you are an awesome God. Lord God, you reign, Lord God. Oh, Lord, you reign. Jesus, you are a mighty God. You are a mighty Lord God. Lord God, and we stand in awe of you, Lord God. We stand in awe of you, Lord Jesus. God, there is nothing you cannot do, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, tonight. We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We glorify you, Lord God.
for an awesome God tonight. A mighty God that we serve. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your name, Lord God. We magnify you, Jesus.
Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, let's continue in that same vein of worship. Mighty you are, God. Holy you are, God. The angels cry, holy, holy. Holy unto you, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we lift up our hands today to give you the glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we're in the same vein of worship, we're going to go right into prayer tonight. And we have names upon a monitor who are looking for healing, salvation, deliverance. And we pray for these people on the monitors today. Before you go ahead and bring out your need, I want you to stop and think about a person on this monitor and bring them before the Lord. This could be their last chance, their last hope to receive some kind of healing or blessing. And they brought their names to this church that it can be able to reach to the throne of God tonight. So with our faith right now, let's go ahead and lift up these names and pray to our God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord God. We magnify you, Lord. There is no other God like you, God. You sit high and you look down, Lord God. God, you are merciful. You are righteous. Oh, Lord God, you are, Lord God, our protector, our provider in the time of need. So, Lord God, we come before you just thanking you, Lord God, for your mercy. Thanking you for your grace, oh God. Thanking you, Lord, Lord Jesus, for making a way for us, oh Lord God, where it seemed to be no way. And God, we come right now asking Jesus that you would touch these people on the monitor tonight, oh God. They're coming, oh God, looking, oh God, for an answer and a need, oh God. And we pray, God, that you would touch every situation. Lay your nets on hand upon every person, oh God, tonight, Lord God. We pray, oh God, whether it's salvation, whether it's deliverance, oh God. Let the answer that they need to come speedily, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we're asking God that you would move tonight, Lord God. We know, oh God, that you are the answer, oh God, that you seek, oh God. You are the center, oh God, of our joy. You are, hallelujah, Lord God, the thing, everything that we need, oh God, it's in you. Lord God, we ask right now, God, that you would touch your people on tonight. God, we are coming in, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord God, broken. Some people coming in, oh God. Burdened. Some people coming in, oh God, with issues that they had or been going through this week. But Lord God, we ask right now, God, that you would move on their behalf, Lord God. We know, Lord God, that you are able, oh God, to lift every burden. Lord God, we know, Lord God, that you are able to give peace in the middle of the storm. God, we know that you are able to heal the sick and raise the dead. So God, we ask. Sin, God, that you would move on tonight. We need you to move between the pews, oh God. We need you, oh God, to saturate your presence in this place today, Lord God. Let the Shekinah glory to fall fresh on us, oh God. And Lord, let every answer and every need to be met by your spirit on tonight, God. We know, Lord God, there's nothing too hard for you, Lord God. For you, oh God, hallelujah, Jesus, created the earth in seven, six days and rested on the seventh. So, Lord God, we know the problems that we face uh, are not bigger than you oh God the situations that we have uh, are not greater than you Lord God uh, hallelujah so we ask right now God uh, humbling ourselves under your will uh, and under your name uh, Lord God we need you to move tonight God uh, we need you to touch us uh, hallelujah Lord God in a marked way oh God uh, let the word that comes forth tonight oh God uh, to change us oh God uh, to correct us oh Lord God uh, to give us the faith that we need to walk hallelujah Lord God in this path called life Lord God we're asking you to move today God we need you Lord God we're desperate for you oh God we need you to direct us God we need you to guide us oh God we need you to strengthen us oh God in this time of trouble we know oh God that times that are beheld before us oh God are filled with perilous times and danger and sickness and problems but God we serve a God that is bigger we serve a God that is stronger we serve a God hallelujah Lord God that no disease hallelujah can stop that no problem hallelujah it's too much for him but Lord God we know that you are more than able God touch us today touch the man of God who is bringing the word Lord God we ask right now that you would strengthen him oh God let this word to be a rainbow word 
Hallelujah, Lord God, to instruct us and to encourage us, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you would move tonight. God, we thank you. Lord God, we come against any distractions that may try to stop this service right now. And we plead the blood of the Lamb from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Any warlock or witch in this place today, in the name of Jesus, you will bow. Hallelujah. Every spirit that is coming to the start of this service right now, we rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, we ask that you would have your way in this place, God. We thank you, God. We bless you, God. We magnify you. We exalt you, God. We give you the glory. We give you the honor and we give you the praise. That's due unto your wonderful name. Hallelujah. If you believe that the Lord have heard your prayer on tonight, I need you to cry with the voice of triumph and lift up a voice in this place and shout. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Jesus. You're worthy, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you. You may be seated in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord God. I'm so glad to be in the house tonight. I don't know about you, but this week has been a hard week. But to come into the presence of God and to just feel his warmth and his peace is such a blessing. And I hope you feel the same way tonight. We're going to take this time right now to welcome our guest in this place. If it's your first, second, or third time, we welcome you here in the name of Jesus. And we pray that this, you will make this church your home church in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus. We have a couple of announcements for your hearing on tonight. Please remember to adhere to COVID safety guidelines. If you have a fever or are experiencing other COVID-like symptoms, please worship with us online. And remember, masks are strongly encouraged. Classes will go live tonight at The Zone. Right after offering kids ages 3 through 12, youth ages 13 through 18, hyphen 19 through 30, single and, gra and have graduated, Bible quizzers, beginners, and juniors, please head over to the education wing, my left, your right, after offering. Bible quizzing interactive scrimmage between New Life and Tampa Life is this Sunday in between service at 1.30 to 5.30 p.m. Come on, come on, let's give a hand clap for that. Praise God. I know these Bible quizzes have been studying hard. Quizzes are asked to come ready with their verses locked. For more information, please see Thaddeus Morrell for more information. The new semester for Florida Apostolic Bible Center starts this Saturday. Everybody say this Saturday. This Saturday. At 8.30 a.m. See Shay Charles to register. Now, we come up to a, the most important part of the service tonight, which is offering time. <laughs> Praise God. Offering time. As we prepare for offering, please note that an usher will be coming around to collect your offering. Please ensure that your offering envelope is completed prior to the usher approaching your row. The electronic giving stations on the north side and the south side of the sanctuary are also available for your convenience. You can also give online at urinlt.com slash give, or you can text to text to give at 888-364-4483. Let us stand for the offering on tonight. Praise God. I'm grateful to be able to give something to God tonight because I know he never forsakes his people. He always provides, he always makes a way. So if you're feeling that you're in a position right now where you need God to make a way, step out on faith and give God what you have and he will bless it in the name of Jesus. Let's go ahead and pray over this offering right now in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Jesus. We come before you right now, Lord God, doing according to your word, oh God, bringing our offerings and our tithes to the house tonight. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that everything that we give on tonight, Lord God, let it to go forth for the furtherance of your kingdom, God. We ask right now, Jesus, that you will multiply it, Lord God. Your people who are given tonight, oh God, bless them exceedingly. Lord God, let open up the windows of heaven, oh God, and pour out a blessing upon them that they have no room to receive, God. 
and let the blessings come in so much, oh God, that the that bishop would have to say, hold off, we have enough. Lord God, I pray that everything that we give, oh God, hallelujah, Lord God, would help us to open churches all throughout Florida, Lord God, and nationwide, if you permit us in the name of Jesus. God, we're asking that you would move on tonight, Lord God. Lord God, those who do not have to give tonight, Lord God, I pray that you will bless her, that they will have time enough to give the next time in Jesus' name. And Lord God, we ask that you would move. Hallelujah, Lord God, right now in this offering. We thank you. We bless you and we magnify you in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody say amen. So we do also, you are in the hand of our ushers and we do have a selection by our praise team. Please worship with the message team.
Finite love reached down from heaven above and touched this sad heart of stone. He gave me pardon and peace from sin, a lasting relief. And now I am one of his own Oh yes, I'm one of his own I'm a child he'll never disown I'll dwell eternally with of the blue, 
And now I'm ready to go Where living water does flow And there Settle down there To rest My soul was lost in despair no hope of heaven so fair till I heard him spoke to me there and now I'm one of his own have peace I never have known His sweet smiling face soon I'll see Oh yes, I'm one of His own I'm a child He'll never disown I'll dwell Eternally with all the bliss And now I'm ready to go Where living water does flow And there settle down it to rest child he'll never disown I'll dwell eternally with all the bliss and now I'm ready to go where living water does flow and there Settle down there to rest. Yes, yes beloved, I'm, I'm a child of the King and I'm, I'm looking forward to head to glory. It's good to be in the house of the Lord tonight and to have you here. The Bible always tells us that we should not forsake the assembling of ourselves together. So it's good that you're here. I appreciate, appreciate that, and I trust that you'll keep on keeping on. Better days are coming by and by, and we can rest up on that because our God will never fail us. Of course, we have much work to do, and uh, I was reminded even this week in regards to the work we have to do, and so... We'll do the best we can, amen, and God will bless us. We're looking, amen, to plant churches, of course. Um, we have several that we have in mind for this year. Uh, Sarasota is probably the first one, but we have at least another three or so in mind, and we want God to bless us. And then, of course, we have a great work that we have to do in South Florida, down in Miami area, so God is going to bless us and to help us because, you know, we need, we need help, amen, and uh, I am determined that people are going to get saved, and they, they're not going to be saved by Catholicism, they need apostolic Bible uh, to save them, and they're going to have to answer to Peter, they're going to have to obey Peter and Paul and so forth, so Amen. We're going to do that. We're going to do the best we can, and we're going to hear well done. Also remember that we're um, looking at building, and if you have an outstanding pledge, you know, let me know. If you don't know if your pledge is outstanding, just you can touch base with me. I have a list of all of those, and we want to get everything done. You know, we had our, our Section 8 re-election on Monday evening. That took us some time, and I know 
that the people that were here, I, I was surprised that there were so many people here. Probably had about 100 people here, and we had a great time. People that looked after men that sang uh, over the, the um, over there and, and do the, did the food, just outstanding. I want to thank God for them, and I trust that God will bless them. I mean, just outstanding men, and uh, we had a great time. And also, um, please do remember that we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this, and we're going to do the best we can. We don't. We we know that um, we're we are. The, I do believe that we're the last generation be, before the rapture, and so we, you know, the last generation before the rapture, beloved. It's not easy, but we're going to do the best we can, and God is going to God is going to help us. And we've done a lot already. We've done a lot. I mean, just talking with even with Brother Boyd and so forth, we've done a lot. But, you know, there's still a lot more for us to do. So we just keep on keeping on, and the Lord is going to help us. And then do help me. You know, I, I need, need help. We're doing this new school. And then, of course, we have the uh, new sanctuary that we're going to put up. And um, whatever help you can give, Please do that because in the final analysis, you're going to be rewarded. And I'm going, to, I'm going to be there to clap my hands for you. Praise God. So God bless you and let's keep keeping on. And God is going to bless us. This church has been blessed. Everywhere you go, they know that this church is a blessing in, in Florida. And then, of course, as I mentioned the last time, Tabby was changed from Tabby to Fab C which is Florida Apostolic Bible Center. So we, we're not just Tampa, we're now Florida. So that means that our work has increased, our responsibility has been expanded. So keep on, and then God will bless you. Tonight we have where the Harris is going to come and preach to us. We thank God for him and for the work that he does. Come on, Brother Harris. Amen. God bless you. New life. Praise the Lord, new life. Amen. Lord bless you tonight. I'm going to do my best to uh, not hold you long. Amen. But I want to give a word. Um, amen. Tonight. So why don't we go ahead and turn in our Bibles to the book of Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 58. I want to give honor as you're turning in your scriptures. To my bishop, love him, call him dad for a reason. Uh, he's He's a good man. I love him very much. Thank God for my pastor. Amen. Pastor Collins. Amen. And all that he does and what he's been in my life. I appreciate him. Their family. Amen. Who, it's really the whole family that we should love, really, because all of them sacrifice so much. Amen. So we should express that appreciation to the family. Amen. Whenever we can do that. Amen. Isaiah chapter 58. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 9. Thank God for my family here also. Amen. Love and appreciate them for their support. Amen. We're going to begin in verse 1. The word of the Lord reads, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and shew my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure, and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to, to make your voice to be heard on high. Is it such a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Wilt thou call this a fast and an acceptable day to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I've chosen? To loose the bands of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, and to let the oppressed go free. And that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out, out to thy house. When thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light, thy light break forth as the morning, and thy 
health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go, for, go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth the finger, and speaking vanity. Amen. Tonight, my message title is Results. Amen, results. I'm pretty result-oriented. I want to see results. Anything that I'm doing, I want to see results. I'm not just interested in just doing some things just to do it, but I am interested in seeing results. Amen. Let's go ahead and pray and ask God to touch us and open up our hearts tonight. Lord, we thank you again for your tender mercy and kindness to us. And so, God, we love you. We honor you for all that you've done for us, Lord. We give you glory, honor, and praise because you are good. There is no God like you. And so, God, we worship you and you alone. We pray now that you'd open up our hearts and minds to your word. Deliver to us, O oh God, a word that will change us, not just tonight, O oh God, but forevermore, O oh God. Let us, O oh God, be more like you. Let us, O oh God, to see your face, O oh God, in peace. We love you and we desire, O oh God, you above all else. We honor you and bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. I am an individual of somewhat of inquisitive nature. Uh, even in school, I tend to prefer to study things on my own uh, because of how my brain works. Um, it's sometimes a little difficult uh, to really grasp information um, that the way I want to grasp it, uh, maybe in a larger setting. Pro possibly sometimes I'm interested in a particular point, uh, and I want to be able to delve into that point a little more and understand some of the things in there because it just helps me out. Uh, whereas in the class, sometimes you don't have that ability, so I like to go back and study it. This is how I do with the Bible. I tend to prefer to go into it and read and get all types of commentaries and so forth and get understanding of what it means because then it sticks with me. It's not just I read it and I can say, Lord, I read your Bible throughout the year. Um, I want to know it. If it takes me years to read through it, at least I know what it says when I'm done. So I, that's how I operate. Amen. Uh, and God has been really merciful to me, understanding uh, my desire to be somewhat inquisitive in everything that I've done. Uh, it's not a, uh, that I've questioned God, but I wonder why. It's not that I doubt God when he says you need to do thus and so. I'm just curious as to why. Uh, why prayer? Why did you choose that? And why this? And there's at one point in time I asked the Lord, well, why fasting? What is that? What, what, why that particular mode? of operation to get certain things done. I come into this church and thank God for the great teaching that I had uh, regarding fasting. Sister Davy in particular led a class in, uh, in many uh, places where she had taught on fasting. And so I understood quite well the results individuals would get from fasting. And so uh, there's times I fasted and times I fasted with the church. But there's a period of time where I wondered, well, why did you choose that? I want to know why. And God has been good to me to help me fill the gap to understand that there is a purpose in the fasting, in the process of the fasting that is very important. I understood that there is something uh, that, that happens to an individual when they fast, or it should happen at least when you fast. And so I want to fill the gap tonight a bit and tell you uh, what should be happening during our fast. We're here on these 21 days. And the thing is, I just don't want to fast the fast. I don't want to be a church that we go every year and we fast at the beginning of the year and we're just doing that and say, that's what we do as a church. That has no value to me personally. Everybody's different, but I'm just sharing with you how I think. That would have no value just to do that but have no results at all. The fasting goes all the way through my anniversary time. So just to kill all of that and I ain't got no results, and then I'm hungry. No, not happening. I know, don't act, y'all act all spiritual tonight. Y'all hungry too. Okay, but I don't want to just be hungry. I don't want to say I just did that. Because I know that God is willing to give us results. I know that God wants to give us results. It is the will of God that we receive results and we desire results. So I have no interest in going through this fast and not getting results. When we end this fast, we will have results. We must have results. And so we're going to talk tonight about what's, what is necessary to get the results at the end of our fast. So you can actually fast without results. Yes, you can. You can fast and, and, and not have any results at all. In Isaiah 55, in verse 11, the Bible reads this, so shall my word 
this is what the Lord is saying. I'm, I'm going to come back to the particular point I was mentioning. But God's word is sure. But there's some things that you need to do to bring God's word to pass. But God's word is sure. It's not that God is going to lie to us and just get us to do something and he's not going to do anything at the end of the day. So God's word is sure, and I'm grateful for that. He says this in Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whitherto I sent it. Therefore, I'm excited about a fast because I know that God will give results in a fast. Because I, 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 if it was just up to me and I'm kind of hoping that he might do it, that's not happening. But if God is promising us something and God has given us instruction on how to get that thing, I know it's going to come to pass. So I'm actually excited about the fast. It's not so much I'm, I'm excited about not eating. I'm excited about the results that God said he was going to give. I'm excited about what God is talking about. I'm excited about the revival that's going to happen, not just here in Tampa, but as Bishop mentioned, that here in Florida, we're going to see revival. God has called us to something greater because he saw what we're doing here. And he says, if you're faithful over something that is smaller, then I'll make you... You see that? So he says, if you're going to do what you need to do in Tampa, I'll give you all of the state of Florida. And I wonder if we do what we need to do in the state of Florida, perhaps the prophecy isn't done yet. God is just trying to see what we're willing to do to win the state of Florida now that he's given us that responsibility. God will give us results. You ought to be excited about this fast because it's only 21 days and you're going to see God move at the end of the fast. You're going to start, go, see God do wonderful things in your life at the end of the fast. And all I got to do is give up 21 days and you're going to do what for me? You're going to move on my behalf? You're going to work on my behalf? Not even a full month and God's going to do something in my life. I'm excited because I know that my God will not lie. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he'll repent. That means he's not lying to us, and he's not going to change his mind at any point in time. It's the will of God that it happens for our lives. God has called us on this fast. We didn't just choose this fast, but God has called us. And if God has called us, that means he has something in his mind that he wants to do at the end of it. There's sometimes I've asked for God to do something, and it may not be his will. Therefore, he may not do it. That came out of my mind. But this came out of the mind of God. That means he had an end result in his mind before he even asked us to fast. There's some results waiting for us. There's some results waiting for us. He's not going to lie. The Bible says in Matthew 17 and verse 21, How be it this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. As Pastor Collins preached recently regarding prayer and fasting, in particular he was talking about fasting, he brought up this scripture, and he said, there's some things that just can't be moved unless we fast. Some things cannot be moved unless we fast. But Jesus says this will come out, if there's prayer and fasting. And so we're going to couple our fasting with prayer and we're going to see the results that we're looking for. I don't know what you're looking for, but I'm looking for my family to be saved. I want to see my unsaved family be saved. I want to see saints that have left the church. I want to see them come back into the house of God. I know that we're praying for the lost, but my sister and brother is now lost and I can't feel comfortable with that. I'm uncomfortable every day knowing that my brother who I walked around here, I smiled with and I shook his hand and I hug him every day. All of a sudden he's gone. I'm uncomfortable with that and I need my brother to come back home. I need my sister to come back home. Thank God for the lost coming back in, but I don't want them just to come in and then go out another door. I need them to come in and I need them to stay in. So something's got to change. I was telling my wife the other day, I said, look, man, look, you know, we talk about revival, but is it revival if we stay at the same numbers because we got some coming in one door and going out the other door? I see revival as people coming in and they're sticking around. They're getting solid in God. They're sticking, their feet are solid in Zion. I don't want them just coming through the door and we write their name on the page and we say we had this many in a year. I want to see the same people next year and a year after that and a year after that. Something's got to give. We got to see results we must see results it's the will of God that they stick around it is not the will of God they just come in the one door and not the other door they're not going to make it to heaven if they make it out the other door so it's about how many we get to heaven it's not how many made it through the doors it's not how many that made it through the baptismal pool it's not how many got prayed through at the altar how many are going to get to heaven he that endures to the end shall be saved 
They must stick around. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad to see every soul saved because I don't know. As a matter of fact, it's a numbers game from what I understand. The more you get in here, the more likely you're going to have more people stick around. So we got to do everything we can to baptize and preach to people and to get them filled with the Holy Ghost as possible. Because, I mean, you can't keep everybody. People make the wrong choices. But we got to do the best that we can to keep whoever we can. Something's got to get. We need people to make it to glory. That is why we even exist as a church. There's no other reason. So I'm looking for, amen, the results. But the problem is we can hinder God's word. As true as God's word is, as, as faithful as God's word is, it, it has the ability to fail at some point. Though the Lord said, he says, look, I send it out and it's going to accomplish what I've sent it out to do. But there's a problem sometimes. Here's how it really works. God sends it out and it's not free floating in the air to get where it's going to be. That is his word. It is riding on rails connected uh, by train tracks that, are, that consist of your faith, your obedience, and your way of living. And if any of those fail, the word can fall through somewhere. If you stop believing, the word can fall through. Yes, it can. You say, well, he spoke it. He got to get it done. Hebrews 4 and 2. The Bible says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well unto them. Speaking of Israel in, in the wilderness. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. You see that? Yeah, so it's not that God was lying to them. It's just that their faith failed. And somewhere the, the word that was preached, the promises that they would have obtained failed simply because they were the problem. You see that? They were the issue. Israel's lack in our text in, in Isaiah, they also had an issue and a problem. Here's something interesting about them that I had to take note of in Isaiah 58 verses 2 and 3. Here's what the Lord is saying regarding Israel. He's watching them. And he says regarding them, yet they seek me daily. They're, they're praying every single day. They're consistent in prayer. Let the church say consistent in prayer. We ought to be consistent in prayer. They were consistent in prayer. They had a consistent prayer life. You see that? Had a consistent prayer life. The Bible also says, the Lord says, and delight to know my ways. Lord. We want to know what you want. What is your will, oh God? We want to do your will. What is it? That's what they're saying. He says, watch though. Watch how the Lord can be a little cynical. As a nation that did righteousness. He says, you're acting like a nation that's doing right. The problem is you're acting like a nation doing right. <laughs> now you need to somehow take the acting out of there for these folk. He says, as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of their God, they ask of me the ordinance of justice. Oh, he's hearing them. You see? It's not that only God is dead just praying, but God is saying, yep, I hear what you're asking. God didn't go on any vacation. He says, so here's what they're asking me. I'm taking note. They ask about my ordinance. Uh, they take delight in approaching to God. And then in verse 3, here's their response to God. He says, wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. They go on to say, wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge. What they're saying here is that here we are praying and fasting every day. At least they're praying every day, and they're fasting frequently. Probably they're fasting at least once a week. But they're fasting frequently, and then they're saying, but we're not getting any what? Results. We're doing all of this, and we have absolutely no results. How frustrating is that? How horrible would that be? A lifetime of prayer and fasting and no results. This was the case with Israel. I don't want that to be our case. That can't be our case. That just can't be our case. You say, well, maybe something was wrong. They were the people of God. They were chosen by God. They were called by God. The Bible calls them the apple of his eye. But they prayed and fasted, and God just looked at them. He says, where have we fasted? Say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? He says, behold, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure, and ye exact all your labors. You got bad motives. Furthermore, you haven't changed. 
nothing about your change. You're doing all of this, and you're trying to show that you're spiritual, but you haven't changed. You're still you at the end of your fast. At the end of your fasting and praying is what the Lord is saying to them. He says at the end of all of that, you haven't done anything that attracts me. Because prayer and fasting in and of itself doesn't attract God. All by itself. If it doesn't change you. So here is the why of the fasting. And it's very important because if we pray and fast, it is very possible to not have any results. You can fast until you starve yourself to death and all you, the only result you'll have is death. That is all. That's it. And you probably may die and go to hell. I don't want to do that. I want those results. I want God to move on my back. I want God to smile on me. I want God to hear my voice when I cry. When I call on him, I want him to say, I'm answering you. As a matter of fact, I knew you were going to call on me, so I was already on my way. I'm always in earshot because you changed something about you that needed to change has changed. So the why in Matthew 17, let's consider this. Matthew 17, verses 20 through 21. The Bible reads, and Jesus said unto them, watch this, and this is a text we're familiar with. He says unto them, because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. How be it, this kind goeth out not, I'm sorry, not, goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. Here the Lord is bringing up this prayer and fasting, which is so very necessary because it's designed not to change God. Because God doesn't change. The issue of these individuals, and he's talking specifically about the disciples here who could not cast out a devil out of an individual, and the issue that Jesus really addresses is not actually the devils when you read it in the context. He's saying your problem is your belief. He literally says because of your unbelief, not because the devil was too strong. He says in this particular thing, your, your faith isn't really strong enough. You lack something here. Because they believed in other stuff. If you recall, they went out and they did other stuff. But in this situation, he says, this kind, you're going to need more faith in what you're dealing with. He says, but this kind of unbelief, it really is not going anywhere unless you pray and fast. Because prayer and fast doesn't change God. He says, I change not. For I am the Lord in uh, Malachi 3 and 6. I change not, Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ the same, yesterday and today and forever. God doesn't need to change. He's already perfect. He's already holy. He's already pure. He's already all powerful. It's nothing you're going to do to change God. He already has a plan in place in his mind. And his plan is already perfect you don't have to change a perfect God but it's the imperfect you and I that needs to change so when we go into prayer and fasting I'm not trying to convince God to do what he wants to do anyway I'm trying to change me so that God can do it for me God's going to do something great. I'm just saying, Lord, I want to be the one that you do it for. Lord, I want to be the one that you change. Lord, I want to be the one that you bless. So I got to do some changing so I can extract, extract um, that power and that stuff that God wants to give into my own life. I'm the one that needs to change. Same thing with Israel. Their issue was not their lack of prayer and fasting. It was simply a lack of change of who they were. And I'm going to read this in the New Living Translation. In Isaiah, back in Isaiah 58, verses 4 and 5, just for clarity, it reads this. What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? He says, this kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. You see that? That's pretty clear. He says, look, if you're done with your fasting, you keep acting the fool with each other. He says, I'm not doing anything. 
If we go all the way through this fast and we're still mad at our brother and we're still acting the fool with our sister and we're still doing stuff we ought not to do, God says, I'm not going to be moved by your fast. Your fact, your lack of eating doesn't do anything for me. It may do something for your waistline, but it's not moving me. I want you to change. I don't want you just going on the diet. We're not going to attract them with our outside appearance. We're going to attract them with a change of heart. And that has to be something that we make happen. We have the purpose in our mind during our fast. Listen, I will change at the end of this class. I'm going to reflect on who I am. I'm going to reflect on what I've done. I'm going to reflect on myself. And I'm going to keep it real because I need God to move. I'm not trying to fake anything with anybody. I need change in this area and that area and that area. I'm saying, God, let this 21 days change every single area of my life that needs to be changed because I must have results. If I got 21 things wrong, God, take care of one every day. I'm praying about it. Reveal it to me. Open up my eyes. Let me see my faults. Let me see my flaws. Let me see where I've messed up. And let me make the changes. I don't care about looking good on the outside. I want God to look on the inside and say, man, that's nice and clean. I really like that right there. You might not see the change, but I need God to change. You can't really do anything for me, but God is able. He is able, and he will do it. I'm trying to attract God to my life. And he says, you got to change. He says, you humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds, bending in the wind, you dress in burlap. That's that covering that they would wear when they were in fasting and so forth. And he says, and cover yourself with ashes. Is this what you call fasting? It's a rhetorical question. He's not saying this is what you should do. He says, you call that fasting? That, that's the tone God is saying. He, he, you think that's fasting? Nah. No. Nah. That's, that's what he's saying in 2022 version. The new, new L in the LT. No. Nah. That's what God, he says, that's not fasting. When I look at it, I'm not seeing you fast. You call it fast. I'm not calling it fasting. He says, do you really think this will please the Lord? He says, seriously? Well, oh, I'm so hungry. And? Oh, Lord, you know, all day long, Jesus, I almost ate that, that Snickers they tried to give me at church. That was the devil they sent that Snickers. I'm so sorry, Bishop. Trying to be serious tonight. <laughs> Say, you might as well ate that Snickers. At least you would have had something because you ain't about to get what you're asking for. Oh, Jesus. You're better off eating the Snickers because you're not about to be blessed. You're not about to be anointed if you keep acting the fool. Eat the Snickers. Go ahead if you don't plan on changing. Go ahead and eat the Snickers. But I'm saying, God, no, no, no. I'm turning this down for a reason. There is something better than this Snickers. There's something better than Chick-fil-A. There's something better than Chipotle. It's something better than Mission Bar. You know where I eat now. You hear something better out there. And I'm saying, God, I want it. I trust your word. And I'm willing to make the sacrifice. Here's what, what it does. I'm going to skip past some of these scriptures this you know, I'm not going to read the rest of that. We're going to skip to the last one in just a moment. But here's, here's really what fasting does. You can read verses 6. That's your homework. Isaiah 58, 6 to 9. That's what I was going to bring up there. Read that for your homework. But in essence, here's what he's saying. He said, look, you go out and you're doing all of this stuff. He says, here's what you really need to do. You need to change in heart. If you read through that portion of Scripture, he is saying to them, look, you need to take care of one another. It's really what he's saying in essence. Because not just to go out and do it, but you should genuinely care for one another because you've changed. There's something about you that changed. So when you see the hungry on the street, you're moved with compassion. You're not going to only give them food, but you're going to say, you know, you need to come to church because you're moved with compassion. He's saying, I want you to be more like me. I want you to see things the way I your sister and your brother, I'm not looking at all of their faults. I'm looking at how can I help them. I understand they got some issues and problems, but I need you to look beyond their fault and look at their needs. That's what you want me to do. Don't we see our brother like that beyond our fault? And see, I think we ought to see our brothers and sisters like that. I'm looking at your needs. I don't care about all the issues that you've been going through, but I'm going to love you anyway. And I'm going to love the stranger. And I'm going to bring them into the house of God. And I'm going to let them know that there is a change that can happen. So I can feel what he feels and see what he sees. He says, man, 
Because you'll be just like you can have whatever you want. Because I know at the end of the fast, you're not going to ask me for no foolishness. You're going to be asking me for stuff that matters because you changed during the fast. And so lastly, I know I'm going to get results. If I can do this right here, I know I'm going to get results. Because as I mentioned earlier, God is not going to change. He already wants to bless you. You ought to be excited about that already. Because God wants to bless you. Or, listen, before you did anything good, before you thought about the fast, you were thinking about having barbecue and all of that stuff. And God said, man, you looking at that barbecue, but I got something in mind for you. It's going to be so great. It's going to be so, I got a blessing in mind for you. You know that stuff in your life that's been hindering you? I got a way to move all of that blockage out of the way. You don't realize it's a devil in your family that's messing up all that stuff. But I got a way to move all of that stuff. We're changed. You can stand. I'm closing. Come on. God desires to bless us. He wants to give us results. It's the will of God that we see God move in this place. God is going to give us revival. But what he's going to do is say, I want to see if you can change. Because when I bring him in, I want you pushing them out the other door. If I, if, I, if I spiritually close the back door, I don't need you breaking it down with your fussing and fighting. I, if, I, if, I, if I shut the, uh, the cracks and heal all of the places that need to be healed in the house of God, I don't need your mess messing it up I, after I done fix it. Because sometimes, we, Lord, I need you to heal me, and then we're going to eat whatever. That's another message. Lord, I, I need you to fix it, but, but you're going to keep doing the same stuff. You mess it up anyway, so you might as well stay the way you are. But no, no, God, look, I'm making changes in my lifestyle going forward. So that it reflects that you have done something in me in these last 21 days. And so there I'm, therefore, I'm not just blessed at the end of January. I'm blessed February, March, April, May, June, July, August, all the way to next year. It could very well be say, you know what, this fast lasted all year long. Next year we say we're still seeing the residual effects of our last fast. We still got the flow of influx of people coming in because of our last fast. We're not going to try again to get the results we need to get now. We may, we're going to fast again at some point, but it's going to be something different. It's going to be different results because I want to go from here to here to here. I don't want to always get here and slip down here and fast again, get here, get back down here. Ah, get me here, Lord, from level to level, from glory to glory. I'm trying to go up in Jesus. I'm trying to go higher in Jesus. I want to go higher in him. And God said, look, I'm trying to get you up the rung. I got something great up here. But year after year, we're going to see growth. We're going to see power. We're going to see the might of God move among us. And it's because we have changed from year to year year. Thank God for the fast, because I need to change. I don't know where you are, but the also ultimate, the night is the night that you make up in your mind, I'm changing. I don't know what you're expecting in this fast, but God is saying, listen, I expect you to change. And I'm going to expect what God expects. I don't want to expect anything differently than what God, God, you expect me to change? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not, look, you don't need to change me. You don't have to fuss at God. You don't have to get in God's face and shake him all up. I say, man, look, I already got some stuff planned for you. I, when I pray for people to get the uh, Holy Ghost, I tell them, listen, you don't have to beg for it. What you doing? Please, please, please you don't have to do all of that. Guess what he says in Joel 2, 2, verse 28. He says, in the last days will I pour out my spirit on all flesh. He's already said he'll do it. Isn't it kind of irritating somebody? Hey, you know what, I'm going to give you this. Can you give me that, please? Yeah, yeah, you can have it, but can you give it to me, please? Yeah, just go ahead and take what you give it to me. Why you, why you do that? We got to do all of that. I'm changing my posture. I'm changing the way I think. Lord, yes, sir, because I'm going to get results. If you want your results, tonight is night. This altar is open. Tonight is night. Everybody should just say, you know what, Lord? I'm coming for my change. 
it may not be everybody that needs any change. I'm just saying I need change. And somebody else may need change. And the altar is open for those who say, Lord, I need change because I want my results. We're going to come tonight and we're going to ask God to change us. And when we change, everything around us will change. We determine our atmosphere because we change. Thank you, Jesus. And we're going to change, and as we change, so will our results. And they'll change for the better. The Lord bless you. Thank God for the results. Oh, we love you, Lord. If you need a place to pray, you can come. We heard a good word tonight. God always wants to bless his people. We're the family of God. And I know I grew up with a large family. We were 11 of us. Different ways because of who we were, but we we're part of the family. And we are part of the family of God. And one of the main things that we need to exhibit amongst us is love. And when we love one another, we always want us all to succeed. We never want to just point out faults because it's so easy to look at faults and then start pointing them out. We don't want to do that. We want to help one another. We want to encourage one another. Don't point out faults. You have to get to a point where you keep your eye on Jesus and help people to be safe. Help them to come to where they need to. Because if you're looking for faults, you'll always find it. But we need to love. Love covers even a multitude of sin. And as people of God, we have to love one another. When we start loving, all of the faults that we used to find on each other, we leave it alone. Because all of us have some things that need to be worked on. And so we need to always come to God and ask him to put his nail-scarred hand upon us and help us so that we can be a family a family, men, women, boys, girls, black, white, whatever, but we're a family. And then, beloved, we have much work, but when we're prepared, when God has prepared us, the work will not be as difficult because we've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. Thank you, Brother Harris, for the good word. And we want God to bless his people. We have much work to do, and we're going to do it out of love. We're not going to promote ourselves as being better than somebody else. We want to love each other, love each other. The Bible says love covers multitude of sin so let's just pray just before we go dear God we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercy Lord we love you because you first loved us we had so many faults in us Lord but God you washed us in your precious blood and we thank you that you brought us Lord to the kingdom for such a time as this and God, I pray that you may touch your people, strengthen your people, encourage your people, and give us, Lord, all that we need in order to do a great work before this world comes to an end. Oh, God, we love you because you first loved us. And so I pray that you always keep your hand upon us, 
strengthen your people as we come even to this altar. Come because we know we need you, Lord. We're never perfect where we ought to be, but God, keep leading us unto perfection so that we can hear well done in that day. Lord God, remember the work that we have in front of us and the place that we are going to go. And I pray that you'll prepare us, Lord, that when we go, they'll be ready to hear. And God, they will be saved so that when we, when we come to you in that day, we will hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Bless your people, Lord. Strengthen your people. Encourage your people. Lift up your people. Lord, and I pray that you will always keep us, Lord, and that we'll always be keeping, keeping on. Hear us, Lord, I pray, and bless us, Lord. Give us faith. Increase our faith, O oh God, and multiply it so that we will utilize it. And God, we know that we will get the answer. Hear, Lord. Bless, Lord. Answer, Lord. And we will be careful to praise you, to honor you, and to give you all of the glory that's due to your wonderful name. In Jesus' name I pray. And all the people said amen. God bless you, beloved. Trust you'll have a good night.